Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here today. I'm Sav. And I'm Jess, and welcome to And a Diet Soda, episode 20, Trusting Your Gut. I can't believe it's already episode 20 today. Um, we're going to be speaking with Misha Brambat. Misha has a master's in public health, shares consistent positivity and motivation, and is the creator of the series, What's Your Story?, which highlights people's journeys and all that they've really been through. Hi, it's Savin Jess. Welcome to And a Diet Soda, an opportunity for people to celebrate their successes, share their failures, and hopefully give a little advice on all things relatable along the way. This community is for appreciating the little things and fostering positive mindsets and intuitive thoughts by talking to people, because chances are they've been through it too. Yeah, we're so excited to get into it today. Misha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to chat with you all. Yeah. Uh, well, we want to first start at the kind of the beginning of your professional journey here and talk about your journey growing up in education and what led to you gaining your master's in public health. Yeah. So a little bit about me. I've grown up in Florida, so it's been everything in Florida. And Florida has a different type of atmosphere. So you get a, a little bit of everything. So I think that diversity aspect really helped me care a lot about my community. And public health is really just caring about your community and finding out what the problems are at a community level and not just an individual level. So got my um, bachelor's in public health too, fell in love with it. And then I was just like, wait, like, I really like this. Like, I think I could go get a master's. So just finished the bachelor's last month and I've learned so much from it. And I'm so excited for my journey moving forward with it. That's amazing. Public health is something that I feel like a lot of people don't recognize is such a huge part of healthcare in general. And a lot of people don't really know what that is. So I was wondering if you could just um, highlight like what is public health? What do you learn and like study about? Yeah. So depending on what school you go to, you're able to do concentrations. So I got really lucky and I went to NSU, which is here in Fort Lauderdale, and I did not have to pick a concentration. So it was a very broad view of what public health is. So once again, public health in the simplest terms is looking at issues at a global level when it comes to a community level. So not just the individual level, you're not just treating one person. So I got really lucky, like I mentioned, so I was able to take classes like women's health or policy, which is a huge part of healthcare and just the world we live in. I think most of us just forget that even a sidewalk is public health because it's a part of the community. So just every little thing around you is a part of public health. And when I say that, people are like, what do you mean? I'm like, no, it seriously is. Everything starting from your environment, to the milk you drink, to even this computer, all of that is a part of public health. Wow. That's great. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, you're so right. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so from when we've like taken some time to look through your social media and everything, you seem to be really involved throughout college and at NSU and whatnot. So we just wanted to know what the most fun experience or maybe like group that you were a part of and what was your experience like at NSU? Yeah, so I had a great four years, um, five years since I went there for my master's too. Um, I think my favorite experience has to be my tour guide position, even though every single day I mean, it's usually either pouring over here or it's 90 degrees, but every day I'd be like, have this moody attitude going in. And then I'd see the families and I'm like, wait, this is their time to see their college. This is their first and maybe only time that they're going to be able to make a decision of where they want to go to college. So my favorite experience has to be just seeing the family spaces when I'm like, yeah, this is the largest library in Florida or this or that. And they just light up. And it's, I think that for sure has made my whole college experience so worth it. It's so fun. I, I totally get what you're saying. Like, I love, um, like it's like bringing the young ones into or really anyone like when you're so passionate about something and letting people in on that passion is so rewarding it's the best yes didn't you also do like a tour guide weren't you a tour guide on campus too no oh um, you should have been she has so much energy <laughs> yeah okay I, I admire yeah, I you around with like my clipboard like yeah <laughs> no I get it would be hard to go into that though in the morning like just um, having to give an entire family, like you're kind of trying to sell them on the school too. Right. But it's, you're like, no, this is a really beautiful place. And it's helped me flourish. Once you like believe in something or someplace, I think it's easier to talk about it too. 
Yeah. I mean, my, ex- I was a tour guide starting my freshman year. So like every single year, just thinking about the types of tours I gave, even though they weren't bad my freshman year, but I'm like, wait, that was so like surface level. And now it's like changed so much. So that for sure does help. And especially when I'm able to talk about experiences. And I think not just as a tour guide, but in life in general, like when you have experience to talk about, it makes the conversation so much more meaningful. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's so cool. So speaking of passion, I want to hear all about your latest passion project. So that was the What's Your Story interview series. Uh, can you just like tell everyone what that was and give us a little overview of that so we can get into it? Yeah. So around election time last year, I had a friend that was going through chemo and This man was a grown up out of like medical school applying for residency, but was watching my back to school series. And he's like, Misha, I love this. And I'm like, you're out of college. Like, what are you doing? Why are you watching it? And he's like, well, it makes me feel less alone. And I was like, wait, what? And then he explained how like watching someone just tell them about like their journey through college or just life in general made him feel more safer. And then I was just like, wait, I could do some something like about this. Like, it doesn't have to be a back to school series. Like, Let's just ask people about their life. So that's how it started. He actually passed away in December. So after that, I was just like, holy crap, I have to do this. Like this was one person that told me that it made an impact. Maybe someone's like eating lunch and watching this and it makes them feel better. I don't know. So that's how that started. And then the 50 states part was once again around election time. And I'm like, the United States feels so divided. Like what can I do to highlight that regardless of where we live or if our state is red or blue, like we, we are still making differences in like our own state. So with all those 50 states, I was able to talk to someone from each state, super exciting stuff. And I just wrapped it up two weeks ago. So found all the states. So yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. So what were your, uh, did you, how did you pick the people? Like, did, were you going based off of themes or people that you knew or how did that work? Yeah. So a good 70% of the people I have never spoken to before. And it was the first time talking to them on Zoom. And I just send them the Zoom link and then they come meet me. And there's no, let's hang out before. There's no, let me send you the questions, nothing like that. So for sure, nerve wracking, because you never know what type of personality they're going to have. And they could be super quiet and just give me one word or like, give me a whole paragraph. Like, I don't know. So when it came to the States that I knew someone from, I was like, yeah, like, let me message them. But then there came a time where I didn't know people from Wyoming or Utah or Idaho. Um, and just these States that I consider weird because I'm in Florida and I don't know much about my States. And I would literally go to the tagged pictures and go reach out to people. And I'd be like, Hey, like, this is what I'm doing. I know this might be weird, but have a look at my past work. Let me know if you're interested. So that's, as weird as that sounds, that's how I got most of my people. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, that's what we do. I mean, we talk to people that we've never even met before. I mean, that's a, that's a, like best part about social media. There's lots of things that people can say, good and bad. But I think one of the best things is that you can meet people. Like, I've never even been to Florida. I would love to go. So, but it's like amazing to be able to talk to people from all over. Um, the question that I had for you is, that seemed, I know, I mean, I loved watching them. I, I know I've been following you for a while. I know we were in like the same, a same like group chat, but when I started seeing these come through and I would watch them, I mean, it's true. It, it does make you feel better and know you're not alone. Um, so, I mean, what, what's next? Are you going to like do another series of something? Because you had, it's amazing. I mean, the, the way that you were able to bring people together is seriously amazing. So I had this really cool idea but COVID doesn't look the best here in Florida. So I don't know how I could go about it in the safest way, but I thought it'd be really cool to just go up to random people and ask them if they're happy. So that's the question that I used to ask at the end of each series um, or each episode, I'd be like, oh, like what's one thing that's made you happy today? So I think that'd be interesting to carry that question over into like an everyday, like maybe at Trader Joe's or something like that. I think that'd be really cool. I think a couple of years ago, I saw it on Instagram or something. I know this idea has been done so many times, but I think it'd be just super cool to do it. As far as the series that you've done, what was the biggest lesson that you learned from that experience? Maybe like the biggest highlight or a funny story, or maybe something that truly resonated with you that um, you feel like everyone really needs to know. 
Yeah. So two things. First of all, if you are from Florida or a state where they don't go over your states to locate them, color them, do whatever. I got one over the states like maybe once in fifth grade. Like I do not know my state. So finally learned where like places are. Couldn't find Maine on the map. And then I realized that it was a corkboard map. So Maine was like it broke off. So I went crazy looking for Maine. I'm like, oh, no. has to be Maine. why is Maine not on here? So I did learn my state. So that's a funny thing. And then the second thing that I learned, I, I would say that I'm not a judgy person, but as humans, we all tend to judge, even if it's in a positive way or a negative way, but I've just learned so much about just people in general. So I interviewed a senator from Vermont and she was explaining how they have the highest vaccination rate. And I just, I was just like, wait, what? Like, I was just so confused by that because from a public health view, I'm like, wait, younger people, like people of color, this or that, like she explained everything. And I was just so surprised. So I think I learned not to always go into something thinking that I have past research on it or past thoughts on it. And even the person that I interviewed from Alabama, he is a amazing human being, um, male, white male. And in my head, I'm like, oh, everyone looks like him and probably acts like him. And he explained how different it is where he goes to school and where he lives, even though they're so close to each other. So he was explaining, even though he wouldn't be the minority, but the way the education system set up over there, he still lacks with so many opportunities because of the distances of the places. And I never thought of that. So I think just little things like that, of just being so mindful of not going into something, judging them or thinking, oh, I know everything about Alabama and I think every person's going to be like this. So I think that's the biggest takeaway I've gotten. Yeah, that's awesome. I think it goes both ways too, because it's like you, you're trying to be mindful and not judge places, but I think it's so important for the person on the other side of that, not to judge you for not knowing. And yeah important like key of that education where like if he had come back at you being like no you're stupid then you probably never would have like been inspired to learn more about it you would have just been like yeah yeah and that's always something well first I was gonna say I remember literally being in middle school and that song about the states it was like Alabama Alaska Arizona I'm like I might that's the only way I know all the states is that song but I couldn't probably find Maine right now on a map, actually. <laughs> Maine? It's like the four corners. Well, you grew up like literally in Connecticut. That's what you're used. I grew up in Colorado. It's like a square next to Utah, next to Arizona. And like, you know, it's like, it's easy. <laughs> you guys are way better off than I am. I literally only before going into this, if I had a map in front of me, I would probably only be able to tell you where California, Texas, and maybe like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so those, those flyover seats get hard. That's not your fault. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's amazing. Um, it's, I love that you're able to like come to that conclusion too. And that's something that when Jess and I first started this podcast, like we come from very different backgrounds, but we both have very similar values and it's crazy to like, just actually sit down and have a conversation with somebody and like to put that judgment aside and like to learn from each other and where you come from and why you might think the way you do. So it's, it's hard in like the state of how everything has been to like have those conversations. So it's good to be able to meet somebody who can really bring us back to that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that talking about like people coming from all different backgrounds and demographics I can't even imagine how vastly different everyone was that you talked to. And I am just so curious to know, like, if you found common ground or similarities between anyone that you interviewed, or if there's like, looking over the whole series, if you're like, dang, humanity is the same, no matter where you come from, or if, if people really are just that different, depending on where you are. So I think when it comes to a common ground, everyone had the heart to serve and it wasn't like they were, I don't know, Bill Gates or this or person or that. They were just making changes within their community and just little things. Like I've had people tell me like, oh, like, I don't know, it's nice to my friend or this or that, like just little things like that. I think every single human being that I interviewed had that heart of service and just that good energy. And I know that sounds so cheesy when I say it out loud, but there was not one conversation that I sat there and I was like, oh, I don't like the way this is going. Or like, this makes me very uncomfortable. Like, yeah, I've had maybe two that I had to email and tell them like, 
hey, can't publish it. Sorry, because I didn't provide a counterpart or this or that. But every other conversation I had, never once did I think to myself, like, wait, the world's like falling apart. Every single conversation made me feel so much safer. And I was like, wait, I think people could see this too. It's not just me that sees it. So that might have been the common ground. But then another question that was completely different was the question about diversity. So each and every person was asked, hey, like, does your state have diversity? Or like, what does diversity look like to you? And some of them wouldn't be able to answer it. They just would stand there and sit there and we would be on the little call for like two minutes with no answer. And I'm like, hey, that's cool. And they would go research about it and literally email me back. And I'm like, wait, what the heck? Like, how cool is that? That someone was able to reflect on a question that I've randomly asked. I don't give them the questions before. Like, and that's, I guess that's a good and a bad thing. Like they get really nervous sometimes, but then the answers are John or raw and genuine. So I think that one was a question that had that difference when people couldn't answer it, but everything else worked out pretty well. Yeah. You just answered our next question. Yeah. yeah. Um, diversity is a really hard question to wrap your head around too, because it has so many levels. There's, uh, of course, like, I think that the first thing that everyone thinks about when they think then when they hear the word diversity is either racial diversity or um, religious or socioeconomic, but there's also so many smaller versions of diversity too, like careers and um, just just all these different levels. So I think that it's a really, really cool question. Um, how? So let me turn it back on you and ask you the same question that you ask your interviewees. How, how does Florida, how has Florida shaped you and diversity and, um, and your experience with that? Yeah, so every time I ask this question, I start off by saying, hey, I'm super blessed. I live in South Florida. And yeah, I mean, has Florida been on the great side for the news? Probably not. But I am super lucky that when I look around, not there's not a single person that like looks exactly like me or has the same career path or this or that. So I've learned a lot within the sense of when I grow up in whatever career I go into, I am serving people and I don't pick and choose who I serve. Regardless if I'm working at my dad's subway and being a cashier, which I don't like, but even if I'm doing that, I'm not picking and choosing. I'm only serving people with really black hair or I'm only serving women. So I think that's something that Florida has for sure taught me because from a younger age, I've always been surrounded by kids that look different than I. I did and just had different backgrounds. I mean, I went to a Title I high school. So Title I is where government assistance is needed. Resources are provided by the government and it is lacking a lot of resources. So from that experience, I learned something completely different than I did through my undergrad, which was a private institution. So I'm super blessed every single time people are like, wait, you went to a high school like that? Like, what did you do? And I'm like, I've learned so much. Like I owe probably who I am to that high school, even though it had no textbooks, no nothing. Like we hardly had coaches, simple things like that. We just didn't have, but I've learned so much from it. So super blessed to be from South Florida. That's amazing. I, I can't even stress the importance of seeing diversity in all forms in your life. When you're younger, I grew up in a place I'm, I'm half Hispanic. I, I know I don't look like it. I always say that, but I am. And I grew up in a place where every person around me was white and I mean, except for my family. And so I think one of the biggest things that drew me to like explore the world and the reason that I moved to California where I live now, and honestly, it was a culture shock. It was such a culture shock. I mean, when I got here, I was like, I mean, I was amazed at the different foods you could get, like everything it was crazy. And it's like, how blessed are we to be able to live in a country where we can experience all of these different um, backgrounds and these cultures and ethnicities. So um, it's, it's amazing to see that around me now. I think it, it would have been such a great thing to be able to grow up around. So thank you for sharing that, especially about your high school too. I mean, there's so much to be said about what people have access to. Yeah, I think that's, Diversity is a funny thing because on uh, obviously it's so important to travel, see different cultures, um, expose yourself, your kids uh, to, to those things because uh, for obvious reasons it's important. But at the same time, there's nothing more comforting than going back to your own culture and what you grew up around and what you know and your family and everything. And I think that that's just such a funny balance between 
knowing and and being aware and self-aware and wanting that comfort of people that are like you and grew up like you and relate to you. Yeah, I can get that. I can get that too. I always, my, one of my like favorite parts of life was like singing his like Spanish music with my family in the kitchen. <laughs> so it's like, there is that balance too, but that's the beauty in it is meeting different people and, and learning about like, Oh, what did you do when you grew up? Like, what's your favorite memory of like your grandma or whatever, you know? So it's just beautiful to be able to learn that. Um, okay. Let's shift gears a little bit. We have a question again, going back to like your social media presence and what you've been able to build. So we wanted to know if you found it challenging to be able to balance like so many different parts of your life. And I mean, obviously the answer is probably yes, but, um, you be, you built Misha inspires your fundraising, you're putting out content. You're also getting your master's in public health. How are you able to do all of that together and not lose it? <laughs> So this might not be a typical answer, but I mean, I am, everyone always thinks that I have my crap together and they're like, oh, Misha, like you're struggling. I'm like, yeah, like I am struggling. I need a nap. I need probably like four coffees a day. Like I don't, I don't know how I do it, but I know I could do it. I think the thing that always reminds me to keep going is I've lost a lot of important people in my life. And I always think that they're watching from above. And a couple of days ago there, I don't even know what I was watching. I'm pretty sure it was on TikTok or something, something that I probably shouldn't have been doing, but I was like, yeah, you know what? Let me go scroll through TikTok. And someone said like, Hey, like I need to put on a show that's like worth watching and like keep going for the people above. And I'm like, wait, like I never thought of it like that. And as crazy as it sounds, I'm someone that my whole career has been based off of science and everything that provides factual information, but just little things like that, knowing that there might be little girls that are watching me or like have my Instagram and they're like, Oh, like Misha's doing it. Maybe I can too. So just finding that balance of keep like to just move forward and ask for help when I need it. That's something that I struggled with a lot. And I still struggle with, I'm like, Oh, let me see if I could do it. If I can't do it on like the 50th trial ask for help, but I waste so much time trying and trying and trying when I could have just asked for help on try one and just simple things like that. So just finding that balance and not being ashamed to ask and just knowing that there might be people watching or people from heaven are probably watching me and they're chilling. So I think just simple things like that keep me going, but the balance is something that's so important. And I when I do lose balance, I feel like people can tell on social media. So now I'm like, you know what, if I can't create content that week, I'm not going to, I'm not going to force myself to create it anymore, or I'm not going to force myself to remember to post. And if I don't, it's not the end of the world. I'm not, I'm not getting paid for it. So I always think of it like that. It's not a deadline. It's not a job. It's not school. It's something that I do for fun. That's good. That takes the stress off of it a little bit. You're, you're like, let's just have fun with it. (laughs) And there's days that I don't even post, but like the days that I'm supposed to post, sometimes I'm like, you know what? I might just take a step back. Like, it's okay. I was so, I'm such a type A person, but through this pandemic, I've realized that like, I cannot control everything. And even if I do, like, there's really no point of controlling it. Like, I just need to go with the flow and just let my mind and soul breathe for a little bit. Something I forget sometimes, but it's been working out. Thankfully, just relaxing. (laughs) You ever, um, I just think for people listening to, I mean, social media can like, so it's can really control us, especially if you're doing things like content creation and whatnot. So do you ever, do you schedule like breaks for yourself? Like actually to like be away and to not post. And what does that typically look like if you do? Yeah. So depending on what my work week looks like or just school week, even though I'm supposed to be posting every Fridays or every Mondays, I just put out a little story. Hey, that's going to be next Friday or Hey, that's going to be next Monday. So I have it completely different. And I think I'm super blessed in that sense that I don't have to do anything that I don't feel like doing. And that took me a while to understand, but those mandatory breaks, if I feel my body starting to shut down, I will take it. Even if it's not ideal, I will take it because I am burning out so fast. And I think students, employees are just just being human right now. Burnout is such a real thing that we don't realize it until we're burnt out really badly. So I'm trying to avoid that. That's that's a skill to be learned is like being in, into, we've talked about it before on this podcast, like knowing your body enough to recognize when you need a break, when you just need a coffee and push through, if you need a 30 minute nap, like identifying what you're feeling and to, it, it's a product, productivity thing too. Like if you're not 
like aware of what your body needs, then you're definitely not going to be as productive as you should be. <laughs> um, so I loved your recent reel and TikTok that you like showed like scooping protein or I don't know, pre-workout or something <laughs> about raising athletes. I thought it was super funny. And also like, how tall are you? Because you did look really tall. <laughs> so I'm five, nine and a half. So not that okay. tall. But I think it's just my arms. My arms are just very, very tall. Like they're skinny (laughs) and tall, which is great. I I mean, I love my body. But someone, a couple people were like, Mish, you look long. I've never heard the word long to describe myself other than my coach is telling me that I look long because I need to like extend something. Not, (laughs) and I was like, is this real life right now? Like, it's like, I've been called tall. I've been called like taller than normal or like this or that never have I heard long before (laughs) so so funny funny. but yes I'm not super tall but tall enough that it looks tall to the front it was pretty it was pretty funny but um (laughs) we would just love to know then how movement and exercise plays a role in your life I mean for a lot of people they use it for like stress reduction and whatnot so with everything going on how, how does it fit into your life and how do you prioritize it and like make time for it? Yeah. So there are weeks that I'm super bad and I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, I work out every single day at 6 a.m. Blah, 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 blah. That's sometimes that's not the case during some weeks, but regardless of what type of month I'm having, I can go back and say like, Hey, I had a couple successful workouts or I just feel better about myself mentally. So I really do try to just get up. And even if it's just a walk or just going outside, I get that done, but I have been struggling with the time and sticking to that time because the meeting might run over, work might run over, something might happen, but we're making it work. That's okay. We love the honesty too. It's like real life. That's a, that's something we always stress on the podcast. It's like, we need to be real about what we are doing in our lives and how to set reasonable expectations and, um, you know, show that, especially to whoever's listening. It's like, we don't have to be freaking superheroes all the time. <laughs> Um, So bouncing off of that, uh, we want to ask you a little bit about the kind of underlying theme of all of our podcasts, uh, which is intuitive eating. And uh, we feel like you bring such an amazing point of view to this community and a big part of mental health is fitness and nutrition. Um, So how does your eating affect your lifestyle and your mental health? Yeah. So I am a vegetarian, so I am super mindful of what goes into my body and just what fuels me. And that might sound silly, but if I am having a stressful day, I might not eat and it rubs off on everything else that I'm doing. So my brother and I have actually been meal prepping and I label the containers now. So it's not even like, Oh, I couldn't find the breakfast container. It's labeled. It says Monday breakfast. So like, that's been something that's been really helpful because I've noticed that when I don't eat, or if I'm in a rush and I'm eating during a meeting or eating while studying, I don't feel like I've fed myself. And I know that might sound silly, but I don't, but I'm like, oh, did I even eat? So now I've been like focusing on times to eat, meal prepping and actually eating the meal prep at the time I'm supposed to be eating it and not everything for breakfast. So, or not just eating one meal and calling it a day. So that's something that I've been doing and it does rub off on the way that I do work for sure. Yeah, going off that, um, as far as mental health and public health, do you have any background in that? And can you speak to, you know, the mass public health in the world and and mental health that's been going on the past year and maybe any like tips that you've found helpful in your life throughout the last year to just be able to come back to who we are and try to like feel better and feel happier? Yeah. So the whole topic of mental health, I'm so happy that we've been taking it into consideration way more than we have before, especially because most of us are sitting at home and we kind of have to sit with ourselves. We can't just push it under the rug anymore. We can't say that we'll deal with it after work or after this, because most of us are sitting at home. So something that I've been doing that might not work for everyone, but I've been actually journaling my thoughts down and reflecting on what I'm thankful for and what I want to improve on and what went right during the day. And just those things are just asking myself what I'm thankful for. I reflect back on it and I'm like, wow, I have so many like blessings in my life. So just sitting with myself and reflecting has been the biggest part of my mental health journey through this past year and a half, because before that I felt like I was always on the go. Like I didn't sit back and realize, Oh, I had a meal today. Like I am so thankful for that meal or 
I got to work out at a gym and I'm thankful for that. Or just simple things like I am going to work. Like I have a job, things like that. I just put behind, I'm like, ah, like I have it because I have to, not because I get to. And just the shift in mind like set and word choices has made such a big difference. Things like, oh, I have to study. I've changed to I can study or I'm able to study. And I never thought those things would make a big difference. But I think just once again, sitting with yourself, reflecting and changing the way you speak to yourself and the people around you for sure has made the biggest difference for me. Yes. I wrote my thesis on in undergrad on growth mindset and neuroplasticity and how it physically changes your brain. And I'm like, when uh, it's so cool to see things become main, like mainstream, it's like, we should be able to talk to ourselves this way. So I love that. Kudos. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. A positive mindset can mean everything. We've heard so many people lately talk about journaling too. Like it's, I think it's becoming really, really popular, but I like your twist on it where it's not just like, dear diary today, I had a snack where you're <laughs> actually like very intentional about it and being like, I am grateful for this. So I think that's a nice, nice twist on it. Yeah. And yeah. there's days I just write rant. Like I kid you not, my diary does not look pretty. My journal is not like any type of like, I probably, it takes me like a good five minutes to even read what I wrote because it's like, so like in the moment writing but even if I'm having like a a block in my head like I put it down on paper and try to see what I could fix like because sometimes I feel bad I'm like I my brother's home right now he's back from college I'm like wait I don't want to bother him about everything that's going on let me just write it down and try to figure it out because even if I try to talk to him he's probably gonna be like what are you you're not making sense like let's let's try (laughs) to I write it down and then if I if I have to go to him I will but it's been really helpful just to write down everything That's great. I have a question bouncing off that because you share so much positivity and inspiration and it's beautiful. It's amazing. It really does affect people. But what do you have to say? We've had some conversations before about like toxic positivity and trying too much to like be too positive and how it might actually negatively affect you. Um, What do you have to say about that and how we can avoid those interactions? Yeah. So that's a great question. So before I, when I meet people that don't really know about my page or who I am as a person or just me in general, I usually mention my page is about positivity, but it's not like the typical positivity. And then they're always like, Oh, like Mish, what does that mean? And I'm like, Oh, like positivity to me doesn't mean that it's rainbows and butterflies or that things are going to be okay right now. But it does mean that down the line, maybe tomorrow, or maybe like five years from now, or maybe a couple hours from now, like things will be okay. Like things are going to line up for you and it doesn't need to be right this second. I think with a lot of like mainstream, like positivity, it's like, ah, rainbows and butterflies. Let's not talk about what we're feeling or how we're going through a bunch of crap. And I think that's the thing that needs to change with the positive thinking, not that everything's okay, but it will be okay. And just that understanding of life has like different roads and you're going to be okay. And it sounds so silly when you say it out loud, but like it, it makes sense at the end. So, yeah. That's great. That's, it's good to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's good when you, for listeners go check out our page, seriously, we'll give you her handle and everything at the end, but it is, it's, it's just good to hear that people are going through something similar to you or that they've been through something similar. It's so hard in the moment to be like, I'm going to be okay. It's, it's really hard sometimes in the moment to feel that way. So, um, thank you. Thank you for answering that. Yeah. I mean, it's a constant reminder too. It's like, just because someone told you once doesn't mean you're going to be like set for life. Like all of a sudden, like, Oh, one time someone told me that things are going to be okay. Now, every time something bad happens, I'm totally fine. Like that's totally unrealistic. So (laughs) don't beat yourself up for not being like, one a okay every time something bad happens like you just need the reminder yeah and I feel like on social media people usually share their outcomes and not like the process getting there so yeah. that's something I've been very mindful of so if I'm having a really bad day at work I will post about it like it will be in my story and people are like wait why are you posting about it and it's to remind people that even if I'm sitting there posting affirmations or this or that like it doesn't mean that I don't sit there getting really hard on myself or having really bad days at work that make me want to like go cry or anything like that. And I think that's something that's been really important about social media with people once again, sharing that journey and not just the outcome, because some of us, I mean, I personally, when I see that, I'm like, wait, why can't I do that overnight? Or why is that not lining up for me? And I think seeing that process, you're like, oh, wait, they had to go through all the steps to get to where they are. It wasn't just overnight. So, yeah, 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 exactly. It's always nice to see that process. (laughs) 
Um, so speaking about your positivity posts and how much you adore your culture and your background, can you share a little bit about, uh, and you even said before you were like, I love my body. I love my lanky arms. Um, can you share a little bit about like what body positivity looks like for you growing up and what your journey to self-love has looked like? Yeah. So I, once again, when I talk about diversity here in Florida, um, where I grew up when I went to a little bit of elementary school and a little bit of middle school, I was the only brown girl for a while, for a very long time. And I felt like those were the years where I wish there were a lot more of me around me because I didn't know what was going on. Like I didn't know why I was so tall or why my hair was so curly or so thick. So I went through this really weird time where I didn't look like anyone, not that I wanted to, but I wanted to see someone like me so badly. Like I would see people like me at like my temple but they were so much shorter than I was or this or that. So I got into this really weird time of my life where I didn't know where I belonged because I didn't look like the typical South Asian girl, but then I didn't look like any of my white friends. And I was so confused for so long. Like I did not comprehend what was happening maybe up until high school. And I know that sounds silly because at high school, you should understand that you're the way you are and there's nothing you could change and there's nothing wrong about you. And none of that all, it didn't sink in until I got to college and I saw a lot of brown people and brown people all of all different types. They weren't just my size or someone else's size. So I think that's when that, oh crap, it's okay to look like this came in. So it didn't come to me for a while. And then by the end of college, I just really fell in love with the way I was working out and just the way that I was eating and just who I was. So all of that shift did happen in college. So probably not the typical, oh, I've loved myself forever answer, but it clicked for me a couple of years ago. So that's my journey through self-care and self-love and just my body in general. And then I just realized how much my body does for me when it comes to school or going to class or just breathing and just doing my work. So I think I've just been very thankful for just who I am for that sense. That's beautiful. We often forget that our bodies are not just like meant to go, go, go all the time that we should be grateful for everything that it's doing for us every single day. Yeah. Even like breathing, like I, there's days that I wake up and I'm like, Oh, I woke up. Like, thank God. Like I'm breathing. I'm, <laughs> I actually interviewed someone. It was one of my first interviews and he was explaining the power of waking up and he was a monk. And now lives in London, lives his best life and shares everything that he's learned through his experiences as a monk. And he gave me a number of how many people don't wake up in the morning without like a reason. And like, I freaked out and every morning, like I'm up, I'm alive. I did it. Like (laughs) we're, we're going to do this. So that conversation honestly just changed the fact that I'm so much more thankful that I woke up and I'm not like, Oh, I have to wake up. Like I have to go to school or this or that. So for sure. Shout out. Gosh. Yeah. So great. Yes. It's really infiltrated like every part of your life. Waking up is so hard for me. This, like even this morning, I'm like, uh, but I'm going to try and think like that. Like tomorrow morning, I'm going to try and have, I'm going to need to like write it down on a sticky note or something. Cause I know I'm going to forget about it the minute my alarm goes off, but maybe I'll like put it on my phone and be like, bitch, be grateful that you woke up. (laughs) Really? No, that's, I'm going to send you the talk with him. And like the way he talks is just so calming that like, I was just like, you know what? You could tell me that the world is like purple and I'd probably believe it because it has, his voice has so much comfort in it. So like everything he said, like genuinely, like it's stuck in there. And I'm like, that never happens. I'm probably one of the most stubborn humans you'll ever meet. But any, everything he said, I was like, Oh, I woke up. I'm thankful. I'm eating well. I'm drinking my water. Like I will do whatever you tell me to do to live life. Like I love the conversation with him. Please do send that to us. I will. (laughs) Yeah. I need that. I'm this morning. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm so tired, but it's such monks too. I just like, they really do. They can really make you feel better. (laughs) It's a whole new type of person. So yeah, I can't say I've ever spoken to you a monk, um, but I would imagine that they're very peaceful. It's, I feel like they, um, it's all about like enjoying the simplicities in life too. And, uh, and appreciating the little things like we talk about on this podcast. So (laughs) Yeah. Misha has the monk vibes. She brought it with her. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. 
the way he, the, how calm he was like, honestly, like I went about my day just like floating. Like, I know this stuff. I'm going to send it to you all. And then let me know how you feel because you probably think that this girl's crazy. But like, after I spoke to him, I was just like, wow, the world is so good. Like I feel alive. Like it was just such one. It was one of those conversations that makes you think like, wait, people like that exist. Like I would want to say that I'm, I'm a decently like good person sometimes but like I am I do have those oh I hate everything like I don't want to do this kind of vibe sometimes too which I'm working on not everyone wakes up like a monk but he really inspired me to be better so shout out to him I owe him a lot (laughs) oh my god all right everyone goal for the next week wake up like a monk yeah (laughs) that's awesome um Okay. We have a few questions that we always get. Um, and one that we'd love to learn about from you, but the first one is on those crazy busy days that you have, um, what are some snacks that you might like just have to stay fueled or like take with you somewhere that you just always have with you? Yeah. So my mom is obsessed with every type of like not humanly possible. So she'll tell, like, we have so many walnuts, like every type of almond humanly possible in the house. So those are things that I just pack. Even if I have a test or something, I will pack it with me because I'm convinced that they make me feel so much better about life. But that's one of those snacks that I probably will eat until I have teeth. So yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like a little hug from mom. You like get your almond out and, yeah. and mom's I like, oh. have like a container of them at my desk. And like at a, at a time when I was studying for my MCAT, I was like, you know what? These are like my little friends. Like, like they're just going to hang out over there. Yeah. I went through this time where I like was attached to them. That's so cute. And just like, was something Misha that made lost you her there. mind studying. So. Yeah. The yeah. MCAT PTSD on the MCAT. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's hilarious. Um, okay. I have another, what, uh, what would you say for, it's always hard for young people who are successful in what they're trying to do, because uh, at a certain point, you're like, am I an adult? Even I feel like it's going to take me years to be like, am I an adult? Am I doing this right? And with everything that you do, like, do you ever feel like you, do you ever struggle with imposter syndrome? Like, do you ever feel like you're like, you're like, why am I doing this? Is this real? <laughs> Yeah, always. So this is something, once again, I'm working on, but in my master's, I was the youngest person there. So I was that kid that didn't get picked for like group projects first or this or that. Like it took me a while to establish like, hi, I'm Misha Bramba and I actually know what I'm doing. So like, please pick me. So it took me a while. So I struggled with that for like the first semester and a half. But then after I was able to like show like, Hey, like, yeah, you might be a doctor, but I could possibly do what you're doing too. Maybe not like save the world through medicine, but like, I will be able to do the same interventions that you are or this or that. So it took me a while to develop that. And just once again, the affirmations have been like helping me a lot. So when I do go through these weird times, like I'm 23, but a lot of my friends are much older. So they're at different stages of their life. So I always feel behind. I'm like, wait, they're doing that. But then I'm like, wait, they're 30. So it makes sense. Like it's okay to get married and have kids and this and that. Like I'm just in this awkward stage where I'm trying to grow but the affirmations have been helping me just to remember like yeah like I am worthy like I am doing this right like I'm beautiful or this just simple things like that but it helps so much also to be 23 and have a master's degree is like girl you are already on it you (laughs) you are ahead oh yeah totally agree um I was going to ask about your affirmations um I don't know if there are like different ways to do them or like how you do you just write them down and you say them to yourself or how does that work? So if I am having one, I mean, I think everyone has those days where they just look at themselves and they're like, Oh, I'm not having it. Like I am, I don't look pretty today or like my hair is a mess or I have this big pimple on my forehead, simple things like that, that like we might not think that are a big deal, but like we make it such a big deal. And even if it means going and watching my reels 500 times and repeating them to myself and just watching them like the video, I'll do that. And I know that sounds silly, but it helps so much. Or even just writing them down on sticky notes. I used to write them down on sticky notes and put them all over my mirror, like over here or by like where I like brush my teeth in the morning. And I, once again, I know it sounds silly, but as we know, like you believe what you put out. And if you keep saying crappy things to yourself, you're going to believe it. It's probably going to come true if you keep saying it 500 times. So I've just changed the way. And even just watching and 
reading scientific articles about affirmations has changed everything because at first I was like, why am I saying that I'm beautiful 500 times to myself? Like, is it making a difference? But like through science, we've seen that it does make a difference. So yeah, there's so many different ways to do it. Even, even if it means writing it down on your water bottle or something like that, I used to sell stickers that had like, I am enough or you are enough or whatever on it. And it was just a constant reminder for people that that's your affirmation. Go say it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I'd be interested to read those articles. They sound really cool. Can you send them over? And then we can also like put them in the show notes for people yeah. if they want to read those too. Yeah. I say I have a lot of research on mindfulness in general and how it like ch- actually changes the brain. So we'll definitely drop some of those in the show notes too, because wow, it's just crazy. It makes you feel better too. You're like, okay, I'm not crazy when I'm telling myself these things repeatedly. Like, you know, it's, it's that growth mindset again, it's actually creating new connections in your brain. It's making a difference in your life. So I get it. Yes. Yeah. And especially because a lot of my like audience right now on Instagram is pre-dental, pre-med, pre-science, anything. So anytime, or the first time I put out the affirmations, I was just like, oh my God, these these people are going to think that I'm crazy, but I attached the articles that had real scientific proof. And it just was like, wait, like it, it works. Like it, it, it's going to change me. So for sure. I feel like that scientific background, I was just like, I'm sold. Let me do it 500 times. Yeah. Yeah. Neuro is crazy, man. <laughs> That's what happens from people who, I mean, all three of us have like, I'm like, if you show me the article, you show me the research. I'm like, okay, I'm obviously, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but you have to show me the research first. <laughs> Um, okay. So this week's weekly challenge announcement, uh, Misha is going to be announcing. Yeah. So it's going to be all about affirmations and really just focusing on trusting yourself and really just finding that peace within yourself to know that you're making the right decision and that you're going to end up where you're supposed to and where you are is the right place to be right now. Misha, thanks so much for being here and being a part of our community today. We really love talking with you, getting to know you. We know people are going to love hearing about what you have to say, the monk talk, the research, everything. Um, but really, thank you for being here. We appreciated everything that you that you told us and shared with us. Yes, you can find Misha on Instagram and TikTok at Misha underscore inspires. And to become a part of our family and community, join us on literally all the social media platforms, except for LinkedIn. I don't think we've done that one. Um, at and diet soda. And we will see everybody next week. Yeah. Thank you, Misha. No worries. It's so good talking to you. Thanks for listening. We hope you were able to give yourself a little love today. You deserve it. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and check us out on social media for weekly conversations and attainable challenges for your health.